So, we recently made a video on the M300 paired with the Zenmuse P1 payload. Now, this was talking about the drone in general and the surveying and 3D mapping capabilities of this combination. If you haven't already watched that video, then go and check it out. The link is in the description and should be somewhere up there. But today we are looking at the H20T payload for the M300. Seen as the stock payload that offers a vast amount of possibilities. In this video we are going to scrape the surface and show you what this deadly combo combo can achieve. So hit that like and subscribe button as we get into this video. Just a quick disclaimer before we start and a bit about what we do here at Edinburgh Drone Company is we scour the world for all the drones manufactured and bring the best of the bunch straight to you guys. We have no affiliation or priority to any one single brand. However, we do retail these drones through our website, which you can also find down in the description. We know we'll never be the first channel to review or test the drone as we aren't sponsored in any way, but this means you will always get an honest opinion and very real reactions. Anyway, let's get back to the video in hand. Oh yeah, sensitive. The H20T is a payload designed specifically for the Matrice 300 drone, a big bird designed for big jobs. It offers an incredible four cameras in one, including a 20 megapixel zoom camera with the equivalent of a, hundred, of a 7 to 120 mil zoom, and it offers an extremely accurate active track that zooms in and out when needed. It has a 12 megapixel wide angle camera for a full scope of any situation. It also comes with a 1200 meter laser rangefinder. And finally, this payload, this payload offers a thermal camera and this can be extremely useful to public services such as Mountain Rescue. We were recently in the Peak District in the heart of England showing the Buxton Mountain Rescue team what this drone and payload can do when put together. Now this all sounds good on paper, but the best thing we can do to test and demonstrate all these amazing features is to get out in the field with the H20T and show you firsthand. Okay, so it's a wee bit windy out, so I'm just coming inside for this bit where I'm just going to talk you through the menu before we get the drone actually in the air. Um, now, obviously, you'll, I'm going to take you through the controller, um, so we're going to switch to that now, and then you'll start on this main screen here, and you'll have your option for your manual flight, mission flight, that's for doing photogrammetry and things like that that you've seen with the P1 video, and then you've got your album, so obviously looking at what you've shot, and then HMS. So then you go into your HMS, which is your health management system, and then this just makes sure that everything's okay. And um, that's a warning on avionics, but I've been through that and that is all okay. Just asking me to land the drone and make sure everything's working all right. Uh, so we'll go back out of that. And so we're just gonna click manual flight and then this will take you into the actual drone. You can also check the aircraft health status here. When you come in, it will let you know if there's anything wrong. It won't allow you to fly it, so you don't need to worry too much about checking this every time. You've got your return to home altitude, all those sort of things, so let's just quit that. And then as you go in, you arrive on just the uh, camera that's on the actual M300 drone, so you want to just click the bottom right, and then you'll find yourself into the Zenmuse H20T, starting with the wide angle. Now, it's only a 12 megapixel camera, as previously mentioned, but it still holds up very well. So I'm just going to go through the whole menu here. Top left here, you've got the DJI icon. That just brings you back to the start. We'll just go back in, just showing you what that does. Then you've got your ready to go GPS. Obviously, if you've used DJI drones, you know what some of these mean. Uh, you've got your checking on air flights here. That just shows you if there's anything overhead. You've got your satellites. As you can see, I'm connected to 18 satellites. You see if you've got your Obstacle sensing, as you can see, it's omnidirectional with this drone, and it's very good obstacle sensing with this drone. You can even go through the settings, go through in a bit, and decide, you know, your warning distance and then your braking distance for each vertical, front, down, all that sort of thing, all that sort of thing. A very sophisticated system as the train goes by, um, and then you've got your connection to your controller here, which is obviously very good. Your HD. You know, you can decide you've got 2.4 gigahertz, 5.8 gigahertz dual band. We'll just stick with dual band. 
and then you've got your batteries you want to make sure that they're on the same voltage um, if there's a difference in voltage the drone might not fly we've had that in the past so you want to basically charge them to full or make sure they're at a similar voltage a bit like um, if you're charging lipo batteries for FPV that sort of thing and so starting here just below the DJI button you've got your bell which is for errors or messages that sort of thing Next to it, you've got your gimbals for sort of recentering it or making your gimbal point straight down. Very useful because this gimbal can take a while to go up and down, that sort of thing. Uh, this drone can hold up to three payloads, which is pretty impressive. Um, obviously, the flight time is going to be affected by that. I think even with just the H20T, the flight time's is from 55 minutes to around 45 minutes, so that's something to think about. Next, you've got your strobe light next to there, and then you've got your pin. If you wanted to pin a certain area, and then you can go to your map and then you'll see where you pinned on here That's and then you can share that with someone else that's in a different area and then you've got your RNG which is your range finder you'll just see the little red crisscross in the center here also that little diamond is the pin and then just above the map here you've got where the range is so that's just showing me that that's 26 feet away there and then you can even press that button there next to it to take that and then you can share that image with wherever is needed. And then next to the range, you've got a little green box here that just shows you you're on your wide. If you were to switch to zoom, it would show I want my zoom or back to white, etc. And then obviously to the right, you've got your ISO, shutter speed. You can lock your auto exposure or unlock your auto exposure. And if that's the sort of thing you want to be doing. Um, obviously on the top right, the mention this is the three dots. That's where you'll have all your um, settings, um, some of this will be familiar to other DJI drones, it's that sort of thing. Center of gravity auto calibration is something that you might not have, uh, so that's when you're having more payloads as discussed earlier. And then you know you just got all the other sort of stuff, this is what I mentioned earlier, the obstacle sensing systems, where you can decide your obstacle braking distance and your warning distance. And like I said, very sophisticated in that it has it in all different directions and you've got advanced then the rest is just a bit self-explanatory. So then at the bottom, you've got your RTK, which stands for real-time kinematic or something like that. that. That's what it stands for. I'm not sure how to pronounce it exactly. Um, but that basically allows you to connect to satellites and have much more accurate data for surveying and things like that, as opposed to GPS, where you're looking at sort of meters accuracy. With RTK, you're gonna get millimeters accuracy and therefore it's much more useful and more accurate. This video is not sponsored by DJI, let me just remind you. We are, this is a quick disclaimer, that we buy these drones ourselves um, and that we're here to test them and give an honest opinion at any point. Don't let that fool you, although this is a DJI drone. Um, okay, right, so let's leave the menus now. And then down here you've got the menus for your video. Uh, video format and then you go into your settings timestamps that sort of thing your grids you know the grids can be very useful for lots of different things just escape that and then down here obviously you've got camera photos record button playback and then auto and then you can play with your EV and shutter speed aperture ISO that sort of thing perfect okay and then from that, you've got your two on the right here, your IR and your zoom. This will be your infrared, which you can see here. And then with your infrared, you're going to get more information at the top right here. You'll have your palettes. And um, if you just click the palette button on the bottom left here, you can see you've got all your different palettes for different uses. Some for surveying, for checking different things. Some good for mountain rescue. We're going to show this off in a bit. And then also with your palettes, you can choose your temperature range. So you can choose, if you're looking for an average body heat, if you're just wanting to pick that up, you can choose that exact temperature range, which is pretty incredible. And it can go extremely high to extremely low. So as you can see there, exceptional, exceptional bit of technology that can save lives at the end of the day or make surveying cheaper and much more reliable. So let's just, Go back out of there so then once you go back to your wide you've also got your zoom of course and now as i said earlier your zoom is equivalent to 
sort of 7 to 120 millimeter. Um, we will also be showing off the zoom in a bit in sort of practical terms, showing off a, a surveying type thing and also the tracking ability with the zoom, which is quite incredible. Yeah, and then down at the bottom, you've got your speed, you've got your altitude, you can change that from miles per hour or kilometers per hour, you can change your altitude from feet to meters, that sort of thing. And then you've got your compass, which just is great and it can show you things like pins, your home point in the middle, how far away your pin is, the direction your drone is facing, all those really useful sort of things that you just want to quickly check the compass is there for, which is fantastic. Okay, right, so let's get the drone in the air and show you how all these features can be used in practical, real life situations. Okay, you're gonna get the drone in the air and head over to a pylon and do some inspection and show off some of the features. Uh, for anyone wondering if I'm still inside, I can see the drone. I can still see the drone. It's just ahead of me. I'll tilt the camera a bit to show you. So you can see on screen what we're looking for here. It's just if we zoom in a bit more, it's this pylon here that we're going to be inspecting for this sort of practical example. Okay, so just going to use the rangefinder to show my distance. Um, now why this zoom and this drone is so useful for inspections is with certain dangerous things such as this pylon over here or power line, not quite exactly sure what it is but no, this is the sort of thing that people will be looking at, is that you can stay 50 meters away because those are the drone rules and still use the zoom. So you can see with the rangefinder, we're 358 feet away, that's definitely over 50 meters. We could bring it closer but we're going to see how we get on here, just zooming in. Uh, well, I'll bring it a wee bit closer mainly because the drone's being quite loud for the audio I think, so we'll see. Uh, okay, so I'm just zoomed in at 10 times here. I'm going to zoom in a wee bit more. Now when you're zoomed in, another good feature for when you're wanting to focus on something specifically, you'll see this little circle and dot at the top left, top left next to the pinpoint and the strobe light. I'll just press that and you can just draw over something like that then it will track it. So if you want to move, if the sunlight's not quite hitting it right, if you move it will keep it tracked wherever you go. If you want to get a different angle, it will stay focused on it. A fantastic feature that will save you time and repositioning for fully inspecting something from all different angles. So we're just going to turn off the track now, zoom in as much as possible and see how much we can see. And so the 200 times is the furthest the drone can go. As you can see, you're quite literally seeing nuts and bolts and that's what people will be looking for when they carry out inspections with this drone. It's looking for wires that may have been cut, showing erosion over time and things like that. So you can really see as much as possible down to the finest, finest line. So we're just going to show you the tracking system and you see it gives you an option to track cars which is quite astounding really. And then you just press it and then it will follow it. And it will zoom in automatically, you zoom out automatically. As you can see, it's some of the best tracking on any drone I've ever used. And you see it does fairly well through the bushes. It's probably gonna lose it at some point as there's a lot of trees. But it gives you an idea, it starts to follow the speed. It's gonna lose it there, but if you just manually turn it, it might find it again. There you go. It's a different car, but you get the idea. So that's one of the best features. Obviously, it comes to a point where you can probably zoom in and take a number plate. Obviously, I'll blur the number plate out. But you can just see how efficient it is. It's going to lose it there. So just to give you an idea of the range, let's use the range finder here, that's 1,680 feet. That's where I lost the car. And then we'll just go to the wide angle and you're seeing just how far you're able to zoom in and track an object. And it, it's slightly mind blowing, the capabilities of this drone. And we're very much, like I said, just scraping the surface. So we'll cut back to me in the studio and we'll finish this off. So that was just a brief glimpse into all the mind-blowing capabilities of the Zenmuse H20T payload. If you've got any questions about this drone or payload then please let us know down in the comments and we'll be sure to answer them or maybe even make a video on it. 
Thanks for watching and please hit that like and subscribe button as it always helps us out. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next one.